All right, y'all. So I wanted to talk about a really big topic, man. So this is really going to be about the OMI token and really what type of investment it is and the, the true value behind it. Because I think that there's multiple different ways to look at this. And we, we had a big conversation. We had a big conversation on Twitter spaces and it, it was actually very healthy. It was very healthy. I love the conversation. There was different perspectives and it's good to have those conversations because it gives you conviction. It makes you think about things in a deeper way to maybe make you get a little bit more educated on things you were unaware of. But at the same time, if you do know a lot of what's being said and someone has a concern, but you have the answer to that concern, it boosts your conviction and, and it lets you know that, oh, I really understand this. My conviction is high because I know what's going on. So I think overall having the conversations that matters brings a lot more value to everyone than to not have the conversation, to, than, to pretend like everything is perfect and everything is fine. I think that that's the worst thing that can happen for a community, especially the culting up together trying to hide your fears as a group as if everyone's not going to know that y'all just scared y'all grouping together getting validation from each other because you can't stand on your own validation like you can't validate yourself you need other people to agree like you need other people to agree with you to feel like you're right back when i had the omi token my, my ten dollar omi token i needed no one to agree with me from my understanding of what they were going to do that's what that's what i got from that and i stood on that then at the, at the point where they changed the fundamentals of the project, I am no longer on that $10 OMI train because they changed the fundamentals of a project. And now I stand by that. I don't move based on what another man thinks or believes. And, and that's, and, and listen, my man's Randy. I'm gonna say it once again, I have no problem with you. I, I know you, you might have an animosity or something towards me, but don't waste your time taking every chance and opportunity that you get to send shots at me, bro. It really does not matter. I don't care what you do. I don't care how successful or unsuccessful you are. I speak on your decisions as an investor because I believe that you make your own decisions, you stand by your decisions, and you can handle the decisions that you're making. That's why you keep making them. But I'm never going to agree and think like you. I don't care to, nor will I, nor do I think that that's a way of thinking that everyone should adopt. It's just not healthy. And if you can't see how what you do is unhealthy for other people to do the exact same thing as you, then that, that sounds like a personal problem. You need to have your own growth sessions and things like that. But listen, sending shots at me, bro, I don't have the same energy. I have no problem with you, bro. I have no problem with you, bro. So, so what you do is you belittle your own point by trying to bring me down in order to make your point seem more valid. You don't gotta bring, if you have a point that you're in what you're saying, the point will be well received if you just make that point. Trying to bring me down is never really gonna work. Like that, that just means that what you're saying has no validity to it. So you trying to play on people's hate for me to get them to agree with you. I mean, that sounds like a weak ass argument to me. If you need, you know, I don't need no tricks or nothing like that. When I say something, I, I mean that. I, that's what I feel about it. That's what I've researched and that's what I believe. That's what it is. And that's the difference. That's why I am still pretty relevant today. Cause that's just, that's just how I operate. I, I just keep it as honest as I possibly can. I become more educated. And I stick true to what I believe and what I'm seeing. Now, the whole big conversation that, that, that really made me think of this is someone commented, almost nobody holds any crypto for the sole reason of utility, bro. Gains are what people want. Utility is second to gains. Um, so holding a to token for 10 years for the hope of utility, most people are not going to do that. So this was a very good point. And it puts you in a mindset of knowing most people are only looking for gains right now. Most people don't even know what NFTs are. Most people don't know what crypto is. Most people don't know what Web3 is. Most people do not understand this space. They just know that there's a lot of money flowing to it right now. And everybody's just trying to grab some, some free money and, and, and just be here and hopefully grab some money. But there is something very interesting and unique about VV that stands out among everything. And maybe this is what I, I feel Randy could potentially see and why he invests and has that conviction. If he's taking a Warren Buffett approach where he's looking for the Coca-Cola, Vivi has a lot of signs that they could potentially beat Coca-Cola. Now, there also is some red flags popping up that maybe they will not be. And that's why it's so risky trying to find the Coca-Cola. Because what Vivi sold themselves as and promised and things like that is different. Now they're purely just a collector's app. While as before, they were talking about being ready player one and, and, and having all this other stuff, like 
now it's just looking like they're literally just going to be the king of collectibles and comics and stuff like that because the actual ready player one is here fortnite and disney have their own partnership for their own metaverse i don't believe vivi will do a better job than fortnite and disney i don't believe vivi will do a better job than the actual ready player one i don't believe that vivi will do a better job than a lot of the people jumping into this space right now when it comes down to creating those types of utilities but what vivi can do potentially is to put their nfts onto other platforms and and to allow interoperability to give their nfts um some utilities in that way and the thing about the omi token is it is actually tied to a project it's supposed to it's designed to be tied to vv it's designed to be integrated into the core of what vv is all about and if they can really get that integration right if they can really start making the connections and doing the things they promised to do this is the one token that is actually tied to a real project and, and blockchain rick yesterday he actually pointed out a, a, a something that was interesting to me basically what he said is that most projects pump off of speculation when it actually starts to deliver and actually do the things that they've promised once the, once they're delivered most of those projects dump because it's all about the speculation. He thinks that VV is past this point because the speculation is over with. Now, what's interesting about that is just because it's past this point right now for like this bull run doesn't mean it's past this is you know it's past forever. Because at the end of the day, utility is going to be king in this space. And it doesn't just have to be utility right now. It's about what's going to be valuable for this token overall in the long run, in the long term. Because if, if you really have conviction in the OMI token and you sit here and stack for the next 10 years, it take 10 years, but then 10 years from now, the whole dynamic of the market changes where you're not, where you're not seeing shit coins pop up, pop off like Dogecoin and stuff like that. When people, the space is going to change to a space where every single thing people hold is going to give some type of true value. It's going to be a time where there's no speculation, where there's no betting on random stuff, just looking for shit coins. It's going to be value. Like when people look at the stock market, maybe some people are out here just purely gambling, but most people, they're digging into the company. You're looking into the financials. You're looking into a lot of different variables to decide if you're going to put your money with a company, if you're going to take a bet on these companies. You look for exactly how much value they bring. You look for the people behind the company. You look for a lot of things. And at a certain point it's crypto, that's what's going to happen also. You're gonna to have to come with a certain amount of value for people to want to hold you, for, for people to wanna hold your crypto, for people to wanna hold things. And I think that even though we're not in a space for that right now, that space will come. So people who are stacking right now and really stacking, taking a Warren Buffett approach, I think that they could really gain handsomely. And if this is, if this is um, Randy's play, it could work out very, very well for him. But like I said, while there's a lot of green flags like VV having the IP, these companies wanting to get close to them, Marvel letting them come out and create a whole new platform just for comic books and stuff like that. It's a lot of signs that the IP really loves VV and really wants to stay with VV and get something done and include VV. That's very, very bullish. But what's bearish is that's going to get true collectors on the platform. But when it comes down to mass adoption, the masses don't care about just collecting. The masses will collect, but I'm more likely to collect skins on a game that I play than I ever am to just collect something on Vivi just for the sake of collecting it, especially at the price point a lot of the stuff on Vivi is going to be at. That 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 puts out that they, that gets rid of so much of the market right there. Just Vivi's price points get rid of so much of the mass people can't mass adopt something as expensive as the stuff that's on vivi they can't mass adopt something something like that it can't be mass adopted people don't got that type of money the most of the world is struggling living paycheck to paycheck so something like that it's impossible like literally that's why collecting is such a niche thing because it, it can't be mass adopted now when they was talking about building ready player one and doing all these things if you're building a game yeah, people will people will go over budget to, to drop ten dollars on a skin to, to buy ten. Oh, this just a skin. It's cool. I play this game every day after work. I'm gonna put this ten dollars here. I'm just not gonna have lunch tomorrow, but I'm putting this ten dollars here. 
A lot of people will do that. Mass amounts of people will do that. But to think that people are finna buy a thousand dollar tie and stuff like, bro, people can't even make rent. People, and it's only getting harder. People can't even make rent and it's getting harder, bro. So, <clears throat> my point is, while there are some green flags pointing to VB having a very bright future, there's some red flags as well. There's some flaws in understanding what VV can potentially be. So outside of what they're, what they're saying is going to be and what they're shooting for, first off, they're taking a long time to accomplish even what they're shooting for. But also, is what they're shooting for even going to be enough? And is there enough clarity around what they're shooting for? Because the Ready Player One thing is clearly off the table with Ready Player One itself actually being in the space. Um, so what, what are they going to, what are they going to do now? What's the utility? What's the value that's going to make this coin worth holding for years and years to come? I mean, some more stuff with, so now they have to just like, it's problems, which is fine. I have no problem with VV having problems that need to be solved. It's an issue right now. The NFT or the, the Omi token, the problem is there's no reason to hold the token. So what we have to do is figure out what reasons we can give people to hold the token. That's fine if that's going to be your approach. I believe that the VV project is strong enough to where they can add in some different random utilities that's going to mean something at some point. But are they really, is the token that important to the project? That like that, That's what I'm not sure on. I'm not sold on the token being that important to the project because they don't, they don't speak about it enough. They don't communicate their intentions or goals enough. All they say is that there's no regulations. Like, I mean, there's regulations and stuff that they have to consider and worry about. They don't give enough information. Like, the what I see by them d ignoring and neglecting the token for so long is I see that it's not important to them. They're earning their money. VV is making its money. The licenses are getting paid. They're getting paid. Why do they have to care about the token? And at the point where that's what I see, like, like some people can stand on, oh, I met these people at events. I know these people. I trust them. I haven't met these people. I don't know these people and I don't trust them. So if these are your friends and stuff like that, it's a lot of people who's invested in stuff and gotten screwed by their friends. One thing that lets, that I've learned is that when it comes down to money, a lot of friends you'll realize ain't your friend anyway. I mean, that's, that's just what it is. That's just life. So... Having this super friendship is fine if you have that and you're willing to trust that. But I want to trust in people's actions. I want to trust in what, you know, <clears throat> if somebody's neglected a token for years and years and years, it tells me that you don't care enough to try to make it the most successful token. If you were working on something and then there was a setback so you had to stop working on it, that's something that you can come out and actually say. We were going in a direction, now we have to switch directions because of regulations. We don't need to know what direction you was going in. We don't know what we need to know what you were switching to. We need to know that the token has actually been a priority, not just you writing token articles every once a year. Writing a new token article once a year does not mean you've actually cared about the token. It means that you want people to shut up asking about it. That's it. But yeah, that's that's what I'm that's where I'm at with it, man. Um. I feel like this token could be a very valuable token one day. Um, and I think that it's probably like five, 10 years off. I think that in terms of the whole space as a whole, it's going to change and it's going to become a space where people prioritize utility over everything else. But right now, people are just prioritize, prioritizing gains. It's all about gains. It's all about money. That's it. And <clears throat> yeah. I think VV could be one of those ones that stick around and is still around for decades to come. But who knows? I guess only time will tell. So let me know what you all think in the comments section down below, fam. That's pretty much it. Um, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn notifications. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace out, Joe.